In the sixth month, after he had appeared to Zechariah regarding his wife Elizabeth, Gabriel went from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to visit a young woman, a virgin, betrothed to a man named Joseph, who was a direct descendant of King David. This virgin's name was Mary. Gabriel said to her, Greetings, Mary. You are favored by God, and he is with you. Mary was troubled by this and tried to understand what such a greeting might mean. Gabriel said, Do not be troubled, Mary, because you have indeed found favor with God, and I speak the truth. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son whom you shall name Jesus. These are the circumstances around the birth of Jesus Christ. After his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph, but before the two had come together as husband and wife, Mary was found to be already with child by the Holy Spirit. But Joseph, being an honorable man, was not willing to put her to death or public disgrace, so he decided in private to separate himself from her quietly. But while he was contemplating this, I speak the truth. An angel of the Lord entered his dream and told him, Joseph, son of King David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her is conceived through the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you must name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke, he did precisely as the angel had commanded. He took Mary as his wife, 
but had no relations with her until after she gave birth. And he named the child Jesus. All of this happened during the time when Caesar Augustus decreed that the entire Roman world should be registered for taxes. This was the first registration, when Quirinius governed Syria. So everyone went to his own town to register, including Joseph, who went from Nazareth in Galilee all the way to the city of David in Judea, called Bethlehem, because he was a direct descendant of King David. He took with him his betrothed, Mary, who was well along in her pregnancy. While in Bethlehem, Mary went into labor and gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in rags and laid him in a feeding trough for farm animals because there was no available room at the inn.
Nearby, shepherds were keeping vigil over their flocks during the night when an angel of the Lord appeared, and God's glory rained down onto the shepherds so that they were terrified. The angel said, Do not be afraid, but listen to me. I bring great and joyous news for everyone. For the sake of all humanity, a Savior is born tonight in the city of David. He is Christ, the Lord. Here's how you will know him. Go and find the baby wrapped in rags and lying in an animal's feeding trough. Then suddenly, an enormous group of angels showed up along with the one angel. All together they praised God. Glory be to God on the heights of heaven and on earth, peace among all those who please him. After the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said, Let's go over to Bethlehem to see this wondrous thing that God has told us about. So they hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the trough. And when they saw it, they told Mary and Joseph all that had been told to them concerning the child, and everyone who heard it was amazed by what the shepherds said. But Mary stored all these precious things in her heart. Then the shepherds returned to the country, praising God for everything they had heard and for what had been told to them.
Eight days later, when they took him to be circumcised, they named him Jesus, the name the angel had given for the child moments before he was conceived. And when it came time for their purification according to the law that Moses had given, they took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. According to the law, every firstborn male child shall be separate to the Lord. And they offered their sacrifice according to what is written in God's law, a pair of turtle doves or two pigeons. <laughs> was an old man named Simeon who lived in Jerusalem. He was a devout worshiper who patiently awaited the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit, who was upon Simeon powerfully, had made it clear to him that he would live to see the Lord's Messiah. On the day of Jesus' presentation, Simeon came in the Spirit to the temple. When the parents brought in the child to perform the rites of the law, Simeon took the child up in his arms and blessed God. Lord, you have allowed your servant to die in peace according to what you have said. I have seen your salvation that you have prepared for all peoples, a light for understanding for the Gentiles and for the glory of your chosen people Israel. There was also a prophetess named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she, too, was advanced in years, having lived with her husband when she was a virgin to seven years later, then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer, night and day. She came up at that very moment, while Simeon was speaking, and began to worship, giving thanks to God, and to talk about the baby to all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, while Herod was king, Magi from the east entered Jerusalem, asking, Where is the one born king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and have come here to worship him. When Herod heard this, he felt threatened, and so all of Jerusalem felt threatened, too. He assembled the chief priests and scribes, and asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they said, because the prophet wrote, And you, Bethlehem, in the region of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So Herod secretly asked the Magi at what point the star had appeared, and then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go, search for the child, and when you find him, let me know so that I may also go and worship him. Then the Magi went on their way, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until its movement stopped directly over the place where the child was. Seeing the star again made them rejoice. They entered the house where he was living and saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell before him and worshipped him, after which they opened their treasures and offered him gifts, gold incense, and myrrh. After the Magi left, an angel appeared to Joseph again in another dream and told him, Wake up! Flee with the child and his mother to Egypt. There you must remain until I tell you, because Herod is going to search for the child soon in an attempt to kill him. So Joseph did as he was told. He, the child and his mother, left for Egypt that night, 
and there they remained until Herod died. This all happened to fulfill the prophecy that the Lord had spoken. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that the Magi had tricked him, he was incensed and sent soldiers to kill all the male children in Bethlehem and surrounding areas who were two years of age and younger, according to the time that the Magi had said.
After Herod died, an angel once again appeared to Joseph in Egypt as he dreamed. The angel said, When you rise, take the child and his mother back to Israel, because those who sought the child's life have perished. So Joseph took Mary and Jesus back to Israel. But learning that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in Herod's stead, Joseph feared to go there and, being advised again in a dream, returned to Galilee, settling back in the city of Nazareth. So the prophecy was fulfilled. He shall be known as a Nazarene. And Jesus grew and was healthy, strong, and wise beyond his apparent years, for God's favor rested on him. We beheld his glory, the glory is of the only offspring of God the Father, full of grace and truth.